Hey everybody, I'm Chris Jacobs, and if you missed us last night, we're back here for night two of the Klondike After Show. Let's see who we can grab from the cast and crew. Discovery viewers. You're watching the Klondike After Show. You're watching the Klondike After Show and you got to stick around. Conditions were pretty brutal. What were some of your secrets to keep yourself warm up there? Uh, shivering. Shivering and alcoholism. It seems to work. Uh, I was a, a foot warmer addict. Klondike nearly killed me literally numerous times. I, you know, I got hypothermic and I got frostbite and I got you know, buried alive, so I think I lost about 12 pounds in shooting. Just being active, I think when your mind's busy too, you forget about the cold. I think no matter how cold it was, it makes it worth it because it's so real. There's no green screen or technology, and I think, you know, Discovery was good at that, and if you're gonna do it, make it authentic, and they achieved it. So what's gonna keep viewers coming back for night three? Um, well, Jack London has a bigger part in those nights, so that's what's gonna keep you coming back. What an incredible set. All of this was recreated for the Klondike After Show. Some of the costumes from the actual production are here on display, and you can see in true Discovery fashion, the producers paid very close attention to detail to make sure that the costumes were period correct. Obviously, back on the Klondike, it was all about layering. See, it gets chilly in Dawson City. You come for my gold now? I know exactly who you are. Bill seems to be the one character in Dawson City who's got an ounce of integrity. Everybody is looking to stab each other in the back, yet you have this through line of morality. I think you can say that Bill Haskell definitely does, but he gets pushed to his absolute limit. And you get to see whether he breaks or not and at what point that kind of thing would happen. You want more of the whore? It was a tough scene because of the climate, obviously, and um, the scenario that Sabine is in, but um, definitely very rewarding and fun, and, um, and I'm not as cold now when I watch it, so I'm fine. <laughs> Why are viewers going to want to make sure to stick around for night three? Do you want to give me a harder question? <laughs> I think people are going to want to see when, how does it end? Does Bill Haskell end up becoming corrupt just like everyone else? Does Sabine maybe go back to her old ways? Does, you know, anyone else die? It's a pretty rough ride, and it's an amazing uplifting story at the end. With that, you'll have to watch and wait and see. What are you gonna do with all your riches you get out of here? Buy 100 acres of prime arable farmland in Vermont. All this goddamn gold. We can't get a good meal. You watch over Claim 152, I lessen the world of an elk. You're gonna need some help bringing back the carcass. You know a spot where the elk drink, not 10 miles from here. I was trained as a sharpshooter. I was stationed on a hill about 100 yards from the battle. I got hit in the back and shoulder. Lost way more blood on those two, but the damned thumb. <laughs> you know, the prehensile thumb is what allowed early men to use tools. It's what distinguishes man from ape. You've seen a lot of death, huh? You know, the one that took down your friend who had a louder report it meant it came from a bigger bore gun than this pea shooter. Mm, you know that happens in the mine next to yours, don't forget. I may not be worth much, but I do know rifles, friend. Your speciality, isn't it? Taking down a target from afar. All right, well, that wraps up night two, and you do not want to miss the epic finale of Klondike here tomorrow. Tune in during each Klondike premiere to get the code for a chance to win $50,000. We'll be back also with everybody from the cast and crew right here at Discovery.com.